Hey, what's up everybody? This is Luke and welcome to our beginning core data video tutorial series. In this series, we'll cover all the basics of using core data. This includes modeling objects, saving them, and fetching them again later. These objects can be displayed as well as edited or deleted and then resaved locally. This course has been edited by Lorenzo Boro. Thank you for all your hard work and all the help with the series. From a high level, Core Data is an object graph management system. While it's easy to try to think of Core Data as being a complicated interface to a local database, and you're not always wrong, Apple's real intent is for you to think in terms of the object graph of your application. Almost all apps have some sort of model layer that consists of various objects representing some piece of information. For instance, say you're working on a note-taking app. After your user has entered a couple of notes, the application will have various view controllers, views, and note objects sitting in memory. When the application is removed from memory, views and view controllers can easily be recreated from your code. But without your help, the model objects your user created representing their notes won't exist anymore. This is the portion of the object graph you want to persist, and that's where core data comes in. Of course, core data isn't a silver bullet. Depending on your app's needs, there are a lot of options when it comes to persistence. NSKeyed Archiver can be used to quickly store an array of NS coding compliant objects, which can be retrieved later. And NS User Defaults is a convenient place to store one-off bits of information, such as user preferences. On the other end of the spectrum, if you want to use a database and consider yourself a SQL expert, you can always just use SQLite directly. This does mean you lose out on a lot of the conveniences of using a framework like Core Data, but if done correctly, could mean a more efficient solution. There are also a number of third-party frameworks, some of which wrap Core Data itself, and others of which are completely unrelated. For example, Realm has become a very popular alternative to Core Data. For a long time, Core Data's main pitfall was its steep learning curve. Oftentimes, people wanted a persistence solution, but they'd heard enough bad about Core Data to be suspicious. Realm was released as an open source answer to this conundrum, and it seems that Apple, perhaps in response, has really stepped up their game and made Core Data's APIs a lot more streamlined and accessible. Core Data may be a little complex at times, but being a first party framework means it has a lot of perks. There are tools built directly into Xcode and instruments for supporting it. It's available on both iOS and OS X. It can easily scale to gigabytes of data, and it's optimized to use memory efficiently. Which one should you use? Well, I can't run your life, but if you want to compare the two, feel free to check out Marin's Realm tutorial or Brian's Saving Data for iOS tutorial to get in-depth looks at both. In this series, you'll learn how to store and retrieve a portion of your object graph including sorting and filtering your data, and building up relationships between objects. Then, if you're hungry for more, you can move on to the intermediate series, where you'll get a more in-depth look at some of the aspects of working with core data. As always, we like to leave you with a challenge. The challenge this time is to move on to video one and get started. I hope you enjoy the rest of the series. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.